I'll make this as quick as I can. Um, these are my last my last batch of custom locos I'm not doing anymore. This is a fantasy loco. And the rest of the locos actually exist. This is a rail power product shell with a Cado cab. I'm having a hard time getting chassis for all these. Let's see these three are rail power products and these are Athern uh, GP38 shells cut down into a GP28M. And I'm thinking about using a cheap Walther's GP9 chassis. I started making my own ditch lights. Just take a piece of straight plastic and cut some round pieces. Stick them on there, glue the holes in them, and then after you got that, after you drill the holes, you cut them, and then you put your LED in the back of them. And then on these uh, coddle handrails and stuff, use a scotch pad before you take them off the screw, and the paint will stick to that a whole lot better. This is one I'm working on right here. It's a uh, SD45-2. 54.90. That's as far as I gotten on that one. And I started working on ditch lights this winter. So that's what they look like with it on, and this is with it off. And then with these here, this one doesn't have a chassis. The rest of them had chassis. They just don't have decoders on yet. Caslo, oh my god. What a pain in the ass. This is as far as I've gotten on this one. Sometimes I just get frustrated and I set it aside until I get bored and I want to try it again. Uh, P2Ks or Proto 2000s, man, they are great models for custom locos. All you do is take them apart, paint them, put them back together. This is an old lifelike GP38 shell with an Atlas chassis. Here's another P2K. This is a custom local. I couldn't afford to buy over $100 for Athens Genesis. I try to keep my locos as cheap as possible, so I said, hell with it. I'll just, it may not be exactly right, but it's close enough for me. I enjoy it. Well, I will when I get a decoder in it. And then here's my headlights point straight, and my dish lights are straight or whatever, because I don't really care for the Canadian angled in. 65, 63, 63, that's Cotto. I just made it look like the way it did the last time it was on, on the railroad. 55, 44. This is a cut down on Atlas. Cut the nose on that one. There's 2502. And here's a custom P2K. 65. And then all these locals. This is my son's stuff here. He doesn't have his own place yet, so. They sit here and they wait, and then I've got locals, about 40 or so locals in boxes, just not enough room in the layout, and I do have a coal train though. Ninety cars on that, and this is my tribute loco, in July 20, or 2005, the crew was killed, so I decided to do that loco in memory to them. And I did build a uh, Montana Rail Link branch line. It goes all the way around above the layout here. There's like eight miles of scale track on this layout. Main line, not counting the sidings. And this is my mail rail yard. And anyway, that branch line comes down. goes around the mountain or hill and then connects to there. Yeah, I'm not running trains right now. It's just too complicated. I try to keep an open track so you can run a train around, but you really got to pay attention to what you're doing. And by yourself, it's it's not the easiest thing to do and trying to do it while you're videoing is impossible. <clears throat> I'm just about full. I can't 
I can't find any room for anything else on the layout. So I'm done collecting. And Kyle's and they all Alice is on eBay just getting too expensive. I used to be able to get them for under 50 bucks. But now you can't find them for under 50 and it's downright ridiculous paying $100 for anything. Um, and I see uh, Castle is probably going to go out of business because Bowser's making a nice barn CP and with Rapido making the other uh, CMs. You really don't need Castle anymore. So, anyway. Just wanted to show you the last custom locos I built. Thank you.